What the latest research says is the best way to improve your balance. There was a 2011 study published in the New South Wales Public Health Bulletin that looked at the question of what is the best way to recommend activity and exercise to prevent falling in those at risk for falling. Now, this article actually was first done in 2008, which is when I first saw it, and I found it to be the most helpful article in changing my mind about what the best way was to improve balance and reduce falling in my clients. What's interesting is this article is done in Australia. Australia has a national public health care system. So everybody, not just older people, are insured under this sort of Medicare-like system. And because of that, the country actually pays for research to answer big questions that they see as ways of saving money. So what Australia wanted to know was, really what helps the most in preventing falls because this is such a huge problem. And the article talks about the cost to Australia from falls. So it's something that they're very keen to to want to do research on to find ways to reduce it. Um, so a lot of really good information comes out of, uh, out of Australia. So this was a meta-analysis that looked at 54 different studies. Um, they had almost 10,000 subjects in all of these studies. And so it looked at specifically different interventions and, and looked at how each intervention either increased or, or reduced fall risk in the people that underwent it. So it, it looked at things like Tai Chi, strength training, intense strength training, um, a program that involved both strength training and balance, it looked at dancing. There, there were 54 different studies. And if you look at the chart and you look at the titles, there's a lot of different things they looked at to see which interventions work the best. And what the authors of the study did was they looked at each intervention, whether it was dancing or Tai Chi or strength training, and they rated it as a highly challenging balance activity a moderately challenging balance activity, a low level balance challenge activity, or strength training with no balance challenge, um, and the last was walking. And so after looking at all these studies, um, and actually because this study was a repeat of what was done in 2008, they looked at each of the studies they had originally looked at to see if it had been updated. So this was a, a pretty updated study for 2008. And what they found um, was very interesting. There were some big conclusions that they had. The biggest was that balanced challenging activities do have a significant impact on reducing falls. So that's important because Many people, when you ask them, many, many physical therapists, many doctors, many people in the, in the public that put themselves out there as balance experts, they'll tell you that the reason people fall is because the people that fall, their muscles are atrophied, they're very, very weak, and they fall as a result of weakness. So what this study is showing is that if you do strength training on a population of people that are at risk for falls, that there's not a very significant improvement from strength training. Um, but there is a significant improvement from balance challenging activities. So that was the first big conclusion of it. And they found that if someone was at risk for falling and then they did balance challenging activities twice a week for a few months, that there was a significant, a statistically significant reduction in the number of falls that person had. Now, they went a step further and they, they compared the effects of highly, um, highly challenging balance activities, moderately challenging balance activities, and uh, um, low-level balance challenging activities. And what they found was that um, highly challenging balance activities um, had a 25% had a, a reduction in falls in the studies they looked at. Moderate to high level challenge had a 22% reduction. Um, and then when they looked at studies that um, included walking as part of the exercise regime, 
there was only a 10% reduction in falling. Um, so what the study shows is that the higher the level of balance challenge, the greater the reduction in falls. And so the take home message for the public should be, and for the doctors prescribing it and the physical therapist doing it, is that the higher level of balance challenge is the thing that's most effective. So specifically, if you compare the articles that included walking training versus no walking training, now this, this statistic is gonna be kind of surprising to a lot of people. So what we're talking about here is where the intervention in the study was um, um, a balance exercises that included the person going for a walk versus balance exercises without a walk. So balance exercises without a walk had a 38% reduction in falls, which is huge. And this was statistically significant. If you included walking training, there was only a 21% reduction in falls. So that's enormous. And what that should tell you is, if you're at risk from falls, adding walking as part of your daily routine maybe isn't helping reduce your falls. Um, Balanced challenging activities without walking training had a pretty significant reduction in falls, 38% reduction in falls over six months. And that's, that's huge. And I think that's very beneficial um, for, for people that are listening to this, for doctors that are prescribing it, for physical therapists, including walking or recommending that people just go for a walk may not really reduce falls at all. In fact, there's a lot of evidence that if the person just does something that has highly challenging balance activities, that that may result in a greater reduction of falls than anything else. Um, the study goes on to, to have a little quote in it about strength training. And so it's, it says, strength training really does not significantly reduce falls. That when you include strength training of any sort in a study, there's no seeming relationship between strength training and reduction in falls. But strength training improves muscle strength, um, it improves stability. There's definitely things that, that muscle strengthening is good for. Um, in terms of osteoporosis, it's probably the best way to slow down and maybe even reverse osteoporosis. So you always wanna include strength training in your workouts, but as a, an exercise or as an activity that reduces falls, strength training does not have the research to support that idea that strength training can reduce falls. So to conclude about this study, um, there have been many other studies since this. In fact, there's some as recently as 2022 that basically back all of these ideas up that when it comes to reducing falls, really the only thing that we know that the research says significantly reduces falls is balance challenging activities. And when you compare high level, moderate level, low level uh, balance challenge, that for all populations, high level balance challenge, in other words, the things that make the people work hardest to maintain their balance, those are the most effective in reducing falls. Um, their recommendation is that anyone that does a fall reduction program should do at least two hours a week and expect to spend at least two months before they're gonna see a significant reduction in their falls. The other thing they found is that you really have to have ongoing uh, fall prevention exercises for it to be effective. In other words, once you stop it, there is a reduction in falls for about six months, but this starts to wear off. So if you really wanna reduce falls long-term, you wanna to stick to these programs pretty much for the rest of your life. But what the studies show is it is possible to reduce falls with balance challenging activities.